Well, hi there. Happy New Year and welcome along to another edition of What's the Word in Association with Ladbrokes. So, first programme of the year, we've got uh, Nicola McGeady from Ladbrokes. How are you, hey, Nicola? Tom. You well? Good, yeah. Still recovering from New Year's Eve, but getting there. Good stuff. Brendan Duke and, of course, Johnny Ward as well. Well, it's mentioned New Year. I mean, you talk about good Christmas. Bookmakers had the Christmas of That's all why I had Christmases. That's celebratory yeah. New Year's Eve. But over the over entire Leopardstown Festival, four days racing, five winning favourites. Yeah. Um, I mean, football as well. Was, there was some shock results, but overall the likes of, you know, Big Shocks, Beaver Dare, Get a Bird, Sam Crow, Footpad, Santini, uh, Kalashnikov, Limini. Plenty yeah, yeah, to talk everyone about. cuts plenty deep, I'm sure, <laughs> Sorry, for all the viewers out there. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Johnny's just looking Johnny, at me. Uh, Johnny, uh, uh, I saw you tweeting, you're like, you said you wouldn't trust anyone that had made money over Christmas punting. Yeah, I'm not actually looking at the stain. I just, the more you mentioned that, the worse I felt about my own life. Not yeah. so much like that Labrooks made money, because I think it's important that bookmakers make money off horse racing, because I think more people are betting on in play and rubbish like that, that we need to keep racing very strong. And it's important that they have bonanzas, like no winning favorite at Kempton. Yeah. All those favorites that you mentioned, mm. um, Nicola being beaten. It was one of those Christmases that genuinely would make you think, should I be doing this at all? Because there were so many ridiculous yeah. results on ground that really wasn't that bad. Um, Footpad getting reeled in at that was one of my personal, I, like, I, I actually, will never get my head around that. Like, I, I just cannot explain that, I, and I never will be able to explain how no. he could be beaten by a horse rising 12 who's so exposed yeah. after everything went right for him. Yeah. Get a bird, how he was beaten, even allowing for the mistake at the last makes no sense for me. Sam Crow looking like he couldn't move between the second last and the last. Boo Verdere getting beaten, that know, was absolutely know, ridiculous. There's it's going to no cost your fortune in therapy you know, as well. Yeah. Uh, right, like how, how are punters going to get it back? Where are those big liabilities coming up um, over Cheltenham? Well, believe it or not, there's plenty of forgiving punters out there. Santini has been long-term anti-post favourite for the RSA. He was obviously beaten at Kempton, but punters haven't given up on him because since being beaten, he's actually shortened up into seven uh, to two from four to one since the defeat. So uh, I think obviously the track at yeah. Cheltenham will suit him better. Faheen is one of the worst results as well for the Stairs hurdle. Um, you've got Road to Respect, I think. He looked, he got no luck in that race, I think it's fair to say, and he finished fourth in the Gold Cup last year. So there's plenty of money for Road to Respect in the Gold Cup. That's the biggest liability there. And then even further ahead to the Grand National, the biggest loser at the moment is Maldini. Oh, okay. So there you go. Yes, yeah. some... he, and he is a loser. He hasn't won about two times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. A he's a three time, he's a three, uh, third season novice over Yeah, he's still in beginner's chases. Yeah, yeah. Very sweet and road to respect, by the way, yeah. uh, for the Gold Cup. I think he'll run an absolute blinder. Um, and he's well worth it each way about at the moment. Okay, Doug. Well, Jiggy, picking winners in the track was difficult. What about, what about winning on the dating front? Do you... You have an interesting strategy, right, don't you? Because you are on Tinder, none of the rest of us, I don't think, are. Well, and a, maybe just share your profile and give us an insight into some of the tactics you use for success on that front, at least. Well, it's a radical strategy. Now, okay. I, 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 it didn't bear any fruit over Christmas, but people are busy. They're too busy for yes. dating. So I think the new, new, new year, this strategy is going to reap serious rewards. You see, I'm basically... I had some of you in my personal life, so I'm back on Tinder. I'm back on the singles game, and... I'm more doing a for anecdotes than anything else because I've if I've learned anything from punditry, it's that people aren't really interested in tips; they're interested in the love life of the pundit. Yeah. So I'm doing it. Is that why you broke up with your last girl? No, no. no <laughs> just to be clear. But um, if life gives you lemons, you make lemons. You're now living life through your persona on, on you know, on. That is slightly worrying. What grand. does your bio say? I'm really interested. Oh, well, the well, face of. Uh, perhaps I can get to that if I just give a little Sorry, background. Sorry. Yeah. Very, very, very so what I've done is I've gone with this radical strategy that I described as searing honesty, but was more succinctly summed up by the boy ward as doing exactly what it says on the Tinder. Yeah. Very clever, that. I don't even uh, remember saying that. No. Uh, <laughs> Happy with that. Uh, no, well, yeah, you should be. Uh, so basically what I'm looking for is a woman that sees red flags in the foreground and thinks not of the peril that lurks beyond, but that thinks that maybe, if I can just peek through those red flags, you <laughs> might see the land of milk and honey. Okay. So with that in mind, if you will indulge me, Tom oh, and Nicola, okay. because there is a lady in our midst, <laughs> bear in mind, uh, you have to swipe curses. You have to swipe uh, left for no and right for yes. Now, obviously, this face, please. Uh, <laughs> but, but it turns Swiping out right. it, it turns out that women read the bios random. But anyway, this is my this is my bio. So Brendan, forty one, less than a kilometre away. All true. Hello. Not a huge fan of dogs, though the odd trap six has done me a good turn. <laughs> Travelling not really my bag either. 
all a bit much. Currently living with my, currently living with my mother, also between jobs, <laughs> otherwise quite the cat. <laughs> So many flags in the field. So right many there. flags. But well, you can look past those flags, am I right? No, not in that bio. Definitely uh, uh, not. Okay, right. Just take out the bit that you don't like dogs. Okay. And then if you say you love dogs, you're not the first. I, I actually actually think you're right there. Like the yeah. dogs is the most That's kind of the bit. If um, violating like part dogs, of the whole thing. There are a lot of weirdos out there. Yeah. <laughs> don't look past that. The rest okay. is fine. Let's look past that. Let's move on to uh, Sandown on Saturday, <laughs> the Tomworth Hurdle. Uh, great one action. First of the great ones at the New Year. Two great ones, obviously, this week as well. We've got Nace as well. So we'll start at the 225 at Sandown. Nicola, follow that with some prizes for the Tomworth, please. Uh, yeah, sorry. We've got a bit <laughs> off track there. But um, yeah, punters kept their powder dry all week because JP McManus had three in the race, all single priced uh, towards the head of the bet and now we know that it's Rath Hill as the one who's going to represent him 11 to 10 favourite he looked very good on his debut at uh, Newbury last month and given Henderson's record in this race you have to give him a lot of respect Elixir Dunitz is next at 5 to 2 uh, for Tizard and he's going for a hat-trick of wins and then after that you've got Southfield Stone 11 to 2 and Grand Sancy at 8 okay Six winners in this, Johnny. Where does the uh, where does the pin fall? Are you looking? Are you I, I think Alexia the nuts is vulnerable. Um, the race at Cheltenham, he did pretty much a solo. Ollie Murphy, the horse in third, that was very green, looked a very very nice horse, but actually was still banged there. Jumped the last. This horse is quite professional. Um, Tizard reckons he's big supreme candidate. It's a bit of a trappy year for the supreme. I think another Henderson horse might well be the one there. But Rat Hill, the strength and depth. Not only Nicky has, but JP McManus has yeah. with these novices, both sexes this year, is insane. I have absolutely no idea how this has just happened. I know JP is kind of going for a few pointers more so than he was in the past, but Rath Hill, um, he looks a professional. He's plenty of pace. Um, I think the race will probably run to suit. The Nicholas horse might be up there as well, making it a gallop. Um, this has been the plan all along. They ran him in Newbury to, straight into um, a, a decent maiden hurdle, see how he get on. Um, he mightn't win the Supreme, um, but I think he... I think he probably will win this. Yeah, okay. Are you with or against Rath Hill here, Jiggy? With Rath Hill, I really like that Birchdale. They decided to mm -hmm. run this horse instead of him, so yeah. that'll do me. That'll, yeah, on, the, on that basis. Uh, we're going to have a really short price favourite for the earlier race at Sandown, that listed mare's hurdle at 12.45. So we should talk about Lorena's price here and probably your chance at Cheltenham as well. Yeah, yeah well, on. we're top price actually for Cheltenham at Brendan. Five to one. There you go. But for this race, one to six. So probably yeah. a race to favour. Unless you're kind of thinking there was so many shocks over Christmas. Who's to say Lorena's not going to get turned over as well? Sensulano's in there. Maybe at about six to one. We'll be up later on tonight with the price. But two out of two this season in a decent mare's handicap. So uh, should run a solid race as well. Lorena here, look. She wins this, right? But surely, as regards the champion hurdle and the way the picture's been muddled, she is still the only sort of thread that needs to be pulled, isn't she? Uh, probably, but you need, you need to kind of get it out of your head as well that things just will happen in that. Like, Willie Mullins had a shocking record with favourites over the Christmas. Like, so yeah. bad. Animix was beaten by a horse that like, looked like he'd struggled to win a maiden hurdle. Yeah. Massive drift on him. And, you know, this horse was about sixes for the Supreme or whatever he was. And he couldn't win a maiden hurdle in Limerick. So you're like, Lorena, I wouldn't be 100% sure she'll run her race because Willie's had a bit of a hit and miss Christmas. Whether she should be 5-1 to one to win the champion hurdle or not, I don't know. She's never run out of novice company. She's never taken on a gelding in Ireland yet or in Britain. Um, mm. I absolutely loved her last season. I was intrigued to see this morning what price is she for the champion hurdle because Boover there basically blotted his copybook at Cheltenham. 5-1 to one is not value. Like, Boover there... On, on his best form, it will take a hell of a lot of beating. She's a long, long way to go to justify that. And she's probably a chaser as well. Um, she is, you know, she yeah. spoke of that. He spoke of that last season, Willie Mullins. Now rivals are thin on the ground. Super Sunday, I think, is going to go the, the champion hurdle route this season, which brings him somewhat into it. I, I wouldn't discount him entirely, but um, she should win this. I'm just not sure she's done enough to be a five to one shot of the champion hurdle. Yeah, one year thoughts, Brendan, on Lorena here and generally. Well, I think she'll win here, and she's five to one by default. But yeah. she probably isn't to be five to one by default. I mean, they're just scratching yeah. around for options. She, you she can see her any, winning it. Like she hasn't done anything. No, she literally hasn't done anything. She hasn't done anything. So she 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 hasn't done anything wrong, and that's yeah. the, the, that's the positive this time. I I could see her winning. I don't know how mm. good she is. I I could see her winning it. Yeah. Okay, great. Elsewhere on Saturday, you like one in the in the opener at Cork, Johnny? Yeah. Um, 
it's, I thought it was a very, very difficult card. Um, Joseph O'Brien trained horse, uh, whose name is Bally Neaty. Bally Neaty. So Bally Neaty um, was a very snug winner in Gorn. His jumping fell to pieces the last year. I'm not really sure what happened, but Joseph O'Brien's season, <clears throat> particularly the end of the season, Absolutely insane. He was banging in seven winners over 24 hours, three of them on the flat, four of them over jumps yeah. or vice versa. Um, he must have about three billion horses in training. I don't right, know how he keeps up with it. Like, and it, it, Really, the team he has, in any event, Ballyneedy, this is basically a handicap. They call it rated novice hurdles. There's a lot of them in Ireland at the moment. It's not a particularly strong race. He's a, he's a tongue tie on. I think he's a hold on as well. The boy Mark Walsh in the saddle, he'd probably have a bit too much class for these. And what's a desperately unappealing punting card of Cork. Yeah, uh, elsewhere on the Saturday card, for you, Brendan, you said you like going out when Canton there in the 205. 205 win Canton. I was scratching around for a bet, Tom, but Caltex uh, ran well in his first start since leaving Gordon Elliott, finished second behind that Bally Hill. Uh, that form got a boost um, when uh, Aso, uh, he was third behind Aso on New Year's yeah. Day. He got five pounds for that, but they were miles clear to third, and a repeat of it might be good enough tomorrow. So that's Caltex. Nicola, anything for you Sunday? I've got uh, one for Sunday, so I'll keep it. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll get there. We'll go, let's get to Sunday. So, uh, Nace, first grade one in Ireland of the year, is at 150. It's the grade one. Lawlers of Nace, novices hurdle. Um, this is this is an intriguing contest. It's a match bet, how, 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 do, how do you bet in this? Yeah, um, Tornado Flyers, six to four, and Battle Over Diane is. 13 to 8, it's Mullins versus Elliot. You've got a grade one Punches 10 champion bumper winner in Tornado Flyer. And then you've got Battle Over Doyen, who Elliot has said this has been the target. He's unbeaten. And he made a great start to his career at Navin uh, over hurdles last month. And he looks like he can step up here. We haven't seen a huge amount of money for either or to really say, you know, have we got a strong, strong favourite. But uh, after that, it's 10 to 1 bar with Commander of Fleet. Yeah, uh, classic. We were at the launch for this and uh, asked Willie Mullins. So, Tornado flyer no 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 i won't run this or go over two miles so it turns up here in a 64 favor and obviously uh johnny what do you yeah think? and um you know the list he had that day didn't sound that formidable so i'm not surprising because this is going to take a bit of winning yeah. um you know i've four anti-post bets at the moment i really like for Cheltenham. and one is road to respect for the gold cup one is um paul nichols fame and glory horse the one in chep's on a bumper over the christmas um whose name i shall remember again um, a third one is Battle Over Dying to win the Neptune. The fourth is probably Angel's Breath to win the Supreme. But Battle Over Dying is probably my best anti post bet at the moment. I think he's going to be very, very good. At the same time, on bare form, is he a six to four shot or whatever in this company to beat the horse with such bumper form? Yeah. And even the other horse in the race, um, you know, Jiggins Sound have a few other nice horses in the race um, that will step up, and it's 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 quite deep. Um, is it Fleet Command Commander of Commander Fleet? Fleet. He he was very disappointing in the Royal Bomb, but he was patently unsuited by the two miles, which looked even by his mid mm -hmm. hurdle and bumper form, he looks like he wants a trip. He could run a lot better. There was a bit of a worry that Battle Over Dyne's um, Conqueror, at, or the horse that he beat at Navin, was pretty well beaten in a maiden hurdle the other yeah, day. The third horse came on and won that he, good bumper he, at Fairy House on yeah, his day. So. And in fair, yeah, and in fairness, his bumper form is working out yeah. very well. I, I think this horse is going to be really, really good. I, I was actually chatting to Eddie O'Leary after he won his maiden hurdle, and I've never seen him as excited about a horse. Um, at least that was my impression anyway. He still has work to do in his jumping. Um, I love the way this was the plan. It was such a logical plan since. And, um, you know, this time last year, Sam Crow was probably about threes, fours for the... Yeah, uh, and they the haven't really had a bust outside yeah. this year, should they? No, and this lad's like 14s or so for the Ballymore, so I'd be getting on him. I think he's a massive future. Gorgeous, gorgeous looking horse as well. Good stuff. Who are you with in this uh, great one, Jiggy? Yeah, an interesting race tactically because Tornado Flyer was keen the last day, so you, you would think he'd want a decent pace to aim at. They might then get a reason up the road for, for, for that job. He jumped left the last day, so going this way around should help him, but I think he'll need to settle better to beat yeah. the, this battler over Doyen, who, the, all right, you can not, uh, knock holes in that form of his uh, maiden hurdle win. The seventh won a handicap, but off a mark in the low hundreds. Yeah. But the bump, bump performance working out, he looked a potential superstar that day. And I'll, I'll back him to confirm that impression. Good, so, so you're both with uh, Battle Over Joy and then? Yeah. Yeah, he's probably the most the horse I'm most excited about in training this year um, because I just think he's... He's, he's a chaser as well, and he's doing it all so quickly. He's educating himself so quickly. Your body language is defying your words, but I'll, I'll go with you on that. Uh, what about you, Nick? What do you like of this? Um, I'm going with Battle Over Doyen yeah? as well. Okay, yeah. oh, good. Clean sweep. Right, what else on the Sunday cards? Card, cards? 
Yeah, nice. again, like the first race, Barrington Court, she's very interesting for the mayor's novice, but JP has two others in that race alone. Um, Eptaunt and... Eptaunt looked a um, monster winner. The filly right. that Willie ran at Christmas as well, um, Sancta Simona could both go there. So yeah. my proviso with her is, I don't know where she'll end up, but she should win the first race. She got experience with the course and trip here recently, and the ground will suit her. I'm quite interested in a horse in the handicap hurdle, um, which looked trappy enough, but Eva's bow, Terence O'Brien... Um, this horse could be overpriced, A, because it's coming off a 70-day break, B, because the rider um, probably isn't that well heralded as yet, and C, because Terence O'Brien doesn't get the credit for his training yeah. um, ability. And I think as with a big field, this, this mare, she made the run neck all Just for way. English people, by the way, Eva's is spelled A-O-I-B-H-E, obviously. Yeah, Eva's. <laughs> that reminds me of um, David Jennings' wedding the other day. <laughs> Alistair Down was at it. and uh, You're not going to repeat his speech, are you? We, we haven't got no, that much time. No, we don't have till 2028. But Alistair <laughs> Down, um, there's the joke was made that Aoife, David's um, now wife, of course, has... Um, She's five letters in her name and four of them are vowels. And to an English person, that must seem utterly bizarre. And um, so, so I, I introduced him to my girlfriend whose name has one vowel. And I said, this is uh, Freya. Her, actually, it has two. Two vowels. Anyway, I was like, <laughs> this only has so many vowels. He said, you have a problem with your bowel? <laughs> so I was like, um, anyway, Eva's uh, bow, uh, I think, could make the run in here. And I expect she will be fit to do herself justice. Um, there are a lot of dodge pots in this race. Yeah, it's a 250 at nice. Uh, Jiggy, you... Do you like when the three run race, the 120, you're going to take on Campiador? It's effectively a match. Yeah. And Campiador is one of the horses in the match. So I'll take him on with Articulum, who's a pretty solid sort. Should yeah. jump out you're being it. harsh on the Campiador there. A, he's one of the unluckiest horses in training, and B, his jumping was absolutely splendid the last day. If you're going to take on one of the unluckiest horses in training, take him on in round four to nine. In a match. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, one I like in the card as well, by the way, is Missy Tata in the 320. She's come back from a long absence, but uh, starting her chasing career. Nicola, you like going on the Sunday cards as well? Yeah, actually, there's a really good card at Plumpton as well. And in the 110, there's this French star called Master of Dino. Now, during the week, we have people looking to have a bet on Master of Dino for the JLT. So we've put him into the betting at 16 to 1, which suggests that all should go well in his debut over in Britain. And of course, you get the bonus at Plumpton and then go and give us an extra 30 grand or something to something get like for that. if they uh, win at Plumpton and go on and win at the festival. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, either way, worth doing, yes. worth doing. Attract these good stars to lesser tracks. Anyway, uh, that's our wrap for Sunday. So, let's get our best bets for the weekend. And uh, go on, Nicola, we'll start with you three uh, for the weekend. I'm not going to do And give us a New Year's resolution as well. Um, Raphael, first of all, yeah. in the Tallworth Hurdle. I'm going to go with. Uh, Battle over Doyen, and then maybe the stupidest thing I've said so far, I will say Sensulano in the listed mayor's hurdle. No, oh, and what about your news resolution? Um, probably to back more winners. Yeah. No, good, good resolution. It's pretty standard. So, Juki, um, I will go for a Trixie. Uh, I will nap uh, Battler over Doyen in the 150 in Nice on Sunday. I'll stick in Arvico <laughs> Blue in the 220 in Nice also on Sunday, and I'll stick in Caltex in the 205 at Wing County. And your resolution? My sister got me swimming lessons, so I have this problem uh, with swimming where I can't breathe properly. Yeah. I try to breathe just before I drown. And <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm going to learn how to breathe properly and become a swimmer. Okay, cool. All right, Johnny, your best bets. I'm going to stick to Nate um, for the three horses. Battle over Dying in the 150 in the first race, Barrington Court, and in the Martinstown Opportunity, the 250, Eva's Bowl. Good yeah. stuff. And New Year's resolution? Just to survive. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's his goal. <laughs> Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and on that joyful note, we'll see you again next week.